What's the word, y'all? We are back, and I'm ready to talk about Game 5. The Clippers go into Phoenix. Phoenix is one game away from being in the finals for the first time in 25-ish years or something like that. And the Clippers come up clutch and keep the series alive. What a game! And I'm here to talk about it. I'm doing this video. I'm recording this video. And I don't even really know if it'll ever come out because my Mac... Um, decided to upgrade on itself. I'm a guy that keeps to the same version of everything because I know that is the version that works. But when I was asleep, this thing decided to do it by itself. <laughs> Didn't even ask my permission. So I, I woke up this morning trying to edit a video and everything's broken. So, you know, technology. But, I, but listen, listen, I'm still going to record it because at least I can say I tried. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Let's talk about this game where... The Clippers keep the series alive. Tyron Lue back against the wall. There's no better coach. And today he outcoached Monty Williams. Let's talk about the Suns losing this game. Um, and it was it was right. It was written on the wall that this was supposed to be a Suns win. Um, uh, Chris Paul and company one game away from the finals. Zubats is a scratch of hour or two before the game. And what I didn't know is that Zubats hadn't missed a game in two seasons. I did not know he was that much of an Iron Man. And that's a big time blow. At least that's what you think. Because over the last couple games, Zubats has been amazing. Zubats has been amazing when it comes to the pick and roll between Devin Booker or a pick and roll with, with Chris Paul. All of that area that was completely open in the last series has not been open because Zubats has played such a great, um, a great role defensively. And his offensive game has been amazing as well. So him being a late squatch, Kawhi being out and then being down 3-1 you would think that the Clippers it was over with but they came out guns blazing and the Suns I will say I'm disappointed I will legitimately say I'm disappointed in the effort that they gave especially early on where they come out and I think it's like 20 to 5 in the first couple minutes and now they're playing catch up for the entire game and, and there was moments in time where they brought it to like 5 and to 6 but the Clippers continue to keep that foot on the neck Man, was this a hard game to watch as a Chris Paul fan. After the last game, they up, they go up 3-1. Um, and Chris Paul in the post-game interview was like, hey, man, I don't want to talk about 3-1s because I got bad track record there. Yeah, you do. And, oh, man, what a uh, It says final, final. He ended with um 8 of 19 from the field, 22 points, 8 assists, 2 turnovers, 2 fouls. He did not have a good game. Especially in that fourth quarter, I felt like my boy CP was settling more than anything. And Chris Paul typically is not a guy that's going to settle. He's going to get to the spots that he knows that he can hit his shots. But in this fourth quarter, he wasn't really doing that. There was a lack of urgency, it felt like, from this team. Like, they, like the, we got two more games to close out. No. I mean, technically, yes. But no, you do not want the momentum to shift to the Clippers and let them go home and, and win game six. And now, of course, you're back at home for game seven. But, like, you want them, you want to close this team out as fast as possible possible because what the Clippers have shown over the last series and before that they got a lot of heart on this roster and it's something that we didn't say last year right now this team has a ton a ton of heart the Clippers do so you want to try to step on their necks while you can this was not a good game for DeAndre Ayton DeAndre Ayton has been amazing through this entire playoff run Chris Paul even said in his last interview that DeAndre Ayton is making a lot of money he's making a lot of money this offseason because of his play I'm listening to Bill Simmons podcast and Bill Simmons say something like DeAndre Ayton it's like a top 10 player I would want on my team if I'm trying to win a championship. That's how that's how, <laughs> that's how great he has been. And I'm not saying I agree with Bill Simmons because I thought that was kind of a wild take, but it's Bill Simmons. You know, he's going to do that. Recency bias is really big with Bill, which is fine, Bill. I'm, that's not a call out, but Bill definitely got a lot of recency bias. Um, And in this one, you, you basically saw two of the biggest things that is wrong with DeAndre Ayton's game. And again, DeAndre Ayton's an emerging star. I truly believe that he's going to be amazing in this league. And even last episode, I said that he's got potential to be multiple, multiple all-stars. But today you saw one of his biggest flaws is that that man's hands are sometimes stone hands. Where they give him a pass, oh, I, I dropped it. Or they give him a pass and now you got this small ball lineup we'll talk about and they're just smacking the ball out of his hands. He couldn't catch today. And part of that is him, and part of that is because his playmakers, Chris Paul is one of the greatest playmakers of all time. Devin Booker, who's an above average playmaker for his position, weren't really looking to find him, even though the guy that was guarding him was five, six inches smaller. But when they did find him, he just wasn't holding on to the ball. He hit it with two turnovers, but I promise it felt like a lot more than that. Um, that was one thing. And the second thing is that he doesn't draw many fouls for a guy that's his big. And he's got more of a finesse game for the big man position. Oh, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to float it up. He's not really banging, banging. But him to finish zero um, zero free throws in 36 minutes, it's not very good when you're going against a team so sm so much more smaller than you. That's my biggest complaint about DeAndre Aiden's game. Um, hopefully, he comes back in the next one and, and, and plays better. But this is a situation where, like, okay, the small ball lineup is kicking his butt. I would have wanted Monty Williams to kind of keep him out of the game. And I know he's been... Been a huge part of their success so far but you got to play to what's 
working and what's not right and in this game cameron johnson was amazing for them and like some of their starters jay mikhail deandre just didn't really come to play today like i said lack of urgency for this thing completely and and hopefully they they turn that around but i would have loved to see uh, monty williams decide to keep the guys that were working and i guess technically you don't really have that much like abdul nadar played some minutes and he was all right Rotori craig was all right but like you can't keep dario in the game because he don't really be on i don't know this is why I can't be a coach, by the way, because I don't really know how you make those adjustments. So, Suns fans, don't be mad about this one, but you got you got to hope y'all close out a six because if you go to a game seven, I don't really know what's going to happen. Chris, like everybody knows, Chris is my boy. You got to step up in game number six. You got to showcase why you are that man, why you're one of the greatest point guards of all time. You got to do it. You got to have a, a crazy game like you had all of last series. You need it. Devin Booker had a good game, his first good game with the mask on. But other than that, nobody else really, really came out here. When you really think about this series as a whole, think about this. The Clippers were two missed free throws away from winning one game. They were one touch, tap, dunk from winning another game. This series is way closer than it being 3-2 is basically the point I'm trying to make. Um, just a couple quick decisions really changed the series. And like I said... The term is like the better team at the end of the day. Who can make those quick decisions on the fly? Who can make those plays at the end of the day? But again, this series is a lot closer than it being 3-1. So yes, it is 3-1. But just like it being 3-1, the, the Clippers could come out and win three in a row and win this series. So the Suns got to step it up. They got to step it up. So let's talk about the Clips. Because uh, PG-13 playoff P is a real thing. He missed, okay. He missed some all-time free throws in one of the games. Him missing two in a row is unex unexcusable. Um... And a reason why they were down 3-1. Again, if he makes one of those free throws, two of those free throws, they win that game, but he doesn't. And then even in the last game that they lost, he missed another big-time free throw. And then because he missed that free throw, he had to miss the second one to try to get the offensive rebound. So basically what I'm saying is don't let PG go to the line when the game is on the, on the line. But, but, but other than that, incredible. 41, 15 for 20, 13 rebounds, 6 assists, and 3 steals. And not even just that. Highlight. Highlight play had my boy Chris Paul stumbling and fumbling. <laughs> had Chris Paul stumbling and fumbling. Only thing I would have wanted from Paul George, and I know he ain't really in the place to do this, he should have looked at Chris Paul for a split second and then knocked down that shot. Everybody knows that that the bag of, of Paul George is, is bigger than a lot of people in the league. But sometimes he don't be going deep in that bag. And today was one of those days. It reminded me of the Indiana versus Miami series from a few years ago where he was the guy. Him putting up 41 in a game where they were about to be eliminated is amazing. Like I said earlier, anytime the Suns went on the run, it was Paul George. Oh, here's a steal leading to a three. Or it was Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson. Oh, my God. Somebody's going to pay this man more money than he probably deserves. Like, I, I'm afraid for whatever team signs Reggie Jackson, clip this because if it's the Bulls, <laughs> my luck. Whoever pays this man a big time bag might be slightly disappointed because I don't know if he's performing like this in any other situation outside of him being with the Clippers, right? So the Clippers should probably bring him back because this is the best version of him. Um, I, I tweeted in the last game he deserved to be in jail because he's got braids on the side and twists at the top. I ain't never seen somebody pull something out there. He got the hairband. He got the goggles. He's got the compression. He got the sleeve. He got the knee pads. He got the mismatched shoes. Whatever it takes, Reggie. <laughs> if this is the recipe for being great, continue to do that. So, obviously, Zubats being down. I'm looking at basketball, oh, NBA.com, and it says center, Terrence Mann. So, they had to go ultra small again. Terrence Mann, I'm pretty sure, did the jump, and it didn't hurt them at the end of the day. After game one, they tried to go really small in game number one. DeAndre Ayton showcased, like, hey, you shouldn't do that against us. But Tyron Lue found a way to make it work. The only time they had bigs in the game is Boogie, and Boogie's got one role when he's in the game. Shoot the ball. He, he played 11 minutes, he had 15 points. Shoot the ball. I understand he's going to give up half of those points back on the defensive side of the ball, but that's that's good value. If I'm giving up 8 and I'm scoring 15, that's 15. 15, yeah, that's good value. That's good value if you ask me. Um, Marcus Morris had to score double-digit points all series long. He had double digits in the first six minutes. Like I said earlier, this team, the Clippers team, have heart like they didn't have last year. And I don't know if that's Tyron Lue because obviously there's a there's a coaching change. I don't I don't maybe they're just better back against I don't know what it is, but they do. Maybe it's Reggie Jackson, <laughs> cause he be hype. The man had two posters. When did Reggie Jackson last poster someone? His first year in Detroit. His last year in OKC. I don't really know. I don't really know posters. Patrick Beverly. 
defensively was cool. Um, the play on Chris Paul, I don't know what to think about it. Chris Paul, obvious. Both of these people, like, I do love both of them. Both of them have a good history of flopping. So I don't really know. It was like a wash to me. Um, but what a game from the Clips. Now they go back home. They got the momentum. They got to keep it up. I would, I would hate, again, I'm a Chris Paul fan, so I want to see him go to the finals, but I also want to see a long series because long series are more fun for me as a basketball fan more than a Chris Paul fan, right? And out East, I don't really, I'm not called in the end of out East, but the way the Milwaukee Bucks have played and now with Trey Young's injury, I don't know, maybe that they, they ends in, is in five because they're up 2-1 and Trey Young's questionable, yada, yada. I need one of these series to go longer. Um, so I kind of want the Clips to, to force a game seven or something. Nothing bad, nothing is better than a good game seven. And I remember game seven, Clippers versus Spurs. Chris Paul's on one hamstring and he hit the game with a shot over Tim Duncan. Yeah. What a moment. What a moment. Post-game interview, he, he basically crying because his hamstring is so bad. He thugged it out and won, and, and won that game. But if I'm not mistaken, he missed the next like three games because his hamstring was so bad. Um, but I, I'm, I'm excited for the rest of the series. Paul George making it look good. And and this is big picture and the future. We'll talk about this in a month or so once the season is over. But the way Paul George performs, he's making it look like, hey, hypothetically, hypothetically, if Kawhi decided to walk and go somewhere else, we can still be a really good playoff team. Because we know that Paul George, if he is the number one, can still have performances like this and help us win games. I don't know if I think Kawhi's agenda is to stay in that lane that he's at home. It's his franchise, even though the man won't even sit with his team or travel with his team. He won't even sit with the man is <laughs> the man is in the, the suite. Just looking down. Like, I don't really like none of these dudes. <laughs> Alright, let me know what you think. Game five was amazing. And um hopefully my computer's done and good by tomorrow and we can have another recap. But I'll see y'all then. Peace.